in progress. Awesome. So welcome, welcome you guys. Being, being a, what I call like in a front bunker for God on a week to week basis, um, it's really uh, disturbing what I see and hear come in uh, every single month to a tune of about 40 new patients a month. Um, and there's people in all sorts of dire straits because we don't have like the basics down. So tonight, uh, we wanted to bless you with just some basics that you could put into use right away um, to change your life, begin to change your brain, begin to uh, help your brain and your nervous system, including your nerves, including your heart, uh, including your GI tract, including your liver. Um, so this is going to be super. Super, super power is these couple core concepts that Juanita will explain tonight will really help you to get on track. Um, and I believe the amount of disease that we're seeing in pediatrics and in, in all age groups uh, can very concerning these days about the amount of disease and pathology that we're seeing in, in the kids. Um, so these are great foundations that you can share with your whole family. Juanita is uh, a person who started out as a patient. Um, she's going to share a story tonight. And she came in very, 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 very sick in 2016. And now um, she has walked the talk. And these are the some of the principles with food that we, you know, Juanita lives by and has lived by and how she the foods, her body by God. So this is the temple of the living God. We're responsible for this system. And so she's going to share her story. Um, she walks the talk. She came from a total disaster in 2016, uh, what I call uh, a ticking time bomb. Just this past week alone, there has been so many ticking time bombs that have come into the office and who have been all over the place. If we're ever going to change anything, we've got to start looking at the food. So without further ado, uh, here's Juanita, our holistic health coach, who has walked the talk and lives, lives everything that we teach. And, and so let's just welcome Juanita tonight. And I, this will be well worth your time. So... All right, so I'm excited to share tonight, not just because this is my favorite topic to coach here at the practice, but because I've experienced the both sides of eating right and not eating right. Um, let me get my slides going here. This is, uh, this. I hope you can see kind of there on the pictures there, but this is me and my story. I started out as a little Mennonite girl, you can see on the bottom corner here, teaching school, uh, chasing my students around, um, graduated, yeah, just, I don't know if you guys know Amish and Mennonite, but we, our particular family, lived really close to the earth, so to speak. We ate all our own vegetables, we basically never bought vegetables. We um, harvested our own meat. If we didn't grow it, we, we, a lot of our meat was wild, you know, venison, fish. I lived on that. I lived on wild game and on fresh produce. We barely ate any pa packaged food. Mom made all our bread. Didn't eat a lot of pastries. Well, dad did. He ate a lot of cookies, but we kids didn't eat so much. <laughs> but I grew up eating, thinking I was pretty healthy, and I seemed healthy for a time until my, my health just, my bad health caught up with me. You know how it is, how things are brewing inside your body and then they kind of reach this climax point when everything goes south. Well, that happened for me at age 42. Even after I left home, I still continued to eat healthy. I didn't eat much packaged food. I ate just, you know, just a good, healthy American diet. It was not the crappy kind. I didn't eat a lot of cor potato chips and hamburgers, you know. I ate healthy, in quotes. But 
by age 42, I probably can't read there on the list, but I had, I had a breast lump. I had continual diarrhea. I had fatigue like crazy. I had chronic pain in my back. I couldn't get rid of it, even with physical therapy and medication. Um, I, had, I, I had lost all the color in my skin. I was pale as a ghost, no freckles. Um, my skin was drying up like an old person. Um, my hair was falling out. I was, I was sick at age 42, and that's when I found Dr. Legree. We happened to cross paths. You know how it is when you, when you seriously ask God to give you an answer. Well, he does. And I crossed paths with Dr. Legree over in Fort Mill, and I heard what was happening here. It was the day after I had asked God, just give me an answer. And I knew this was my answer. But at the time... I didn't know what was be involved, and I'll tell you a little more about the story in the, in the beginning. But now, I have to say, well, actually, five months later, I felt a completely different person. I had the energy I had in my 20s. I had miraculously lost 42 pounds and felt like myself again. I um, had the skin, the color came back to my skin. My hormones were leveling out. Tons of things were changing. And now I, people that see me now and see my before pictures close up, I know it's a little harder here on the screen, but I do not look like the same person hardly. My face was so round and puffy and inflamed. I had continual migraines. It was a mess back then. But now, oops, this way. Now I feel like a completely different person. And a big part of that was eating. And I didn't know, what I didn't know is my healthy family that, did things very healthy in an in a American way of thinking, you know, conventional so, social way of thinking. We were eating very healthy, but it wasn't healthy. And I'm going to teach you those principles tonight of what had to change in my life to maintain the ground I've gained with, with um, Beyond Limits here. So, first of all, food. Well, it's the one thing we all have in common. <laughs> we all eat you know, one to three times a day, sometimes five, you know, and a lot of times we don't have good eating habits, not just in the kinds of food, but in the way, the, the way we eat. And here's just a really quick thing, mealtime. Back in the day, maybe in your day, maybe in your grandparents' day, the family sat down to eat together. They prayed often before meals or just had a moment of silence, whatever. Um, and they certainly didn't have cell phones back then. And their food was a lot more healthy. There was a lot more minerals and, and enzymes native in the food at that point because the soil wasn't depleted like it is today. Now, in order to get that kind of benefit, we need to have some, some strict practices in place for ourselves so our bodies can actually digest the food we eat. That's so our bodies can actually take it in, absorb it, break it down, and give it to ourselves for nutrients and for energy. Um, one is the principle of sitting down. You look through all kinds of cultures. They're either going to lay down or sit down for eating. A lot of times, if you're like me, like I was, you eat on the run. Not good for the body. Your body's in fight or flight, or it's in action mode, and it's not in digestive mode when you are standing. You need to sit. You need to scientifically take at least 20 minutes for that meal, for the body to go through the process of, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Okay, I'm full now. You need a 20-minute section. Well, very few people actually take 20 minutes to eat. Um, cell phones, of course, disrupt the harmony in the brain and the body, besides distracting you from the people that are in front of you that you could be connecting with while you're eating. It's a really wise thing to take digestive enzymes before your meal. We've got a really high-powered one here. That's the best I've ever seen. If you need one, let us know. But that will help your body break down the food. Because like I said, a lot of enzymes were in the food back in the day. They aren't in the food anymore because the soil has been stripped and the food is, is not as healthy. It's not giving us what we need fully. Um, you know, doing things like a moment of silence, prayer, gratitude, or just taking a few deep breaths before you start to eat your food will help put your body into a parasympathetic mode. That means a calm, digest, rest mode, rather than the drive, 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 you know, go, go, go mode that we're usually in. It lets the body settle into that so it can concentrate and put all its energy into the eating. Um, during, with, with that quietness, it increases the blood flow to the digestive tract. It increases the salivary enzyme production. Now, one way to stimulate that is simply smell your food. 
the smelling the food is is um, really really great because it kicks off your 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 saliva is so much a part of your eating and digestion process. That saliva is the first part that starts breaking the food down. So so. Sw sniffing your food before you chew bite into it is really powerful for the body. It might sound funny. You, you, your people at the restaurant might laugh at you if they saw you sniffing all your food, but it's really, really good for the body. And that moment of quietness before you eat prepares the intestines to actually absorb the food you're putting down and to be ready to break that down and to, and to pass it into the bloodstream. The big thing, the simplest thing to remember is simply chew slowly and thoroughly. Take the time to chew that food up because, again, your teeth, your saliva is the first stage of digestion. All right, now let's get into the boring stuff. I promise you this is the most boring slide on the whole, on the whole production, whole thing, and the rest are going to be much more colorful. But these are terms that I really had no clue about six years ago. I did not have any idea what non-GMO meant. I thought organic was only for fanatics, and gluten-free, that stuff tasted yuck. That was my thought. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about each of those three, and then we're going to dive into the actual food groups and how to get help, how to eat healthy. Non-GMO. GMO means genetically modified organism. It was adapted, developed for the purpose of being able to raise crops that you could spray a ton of chemicals on without killing them. It made crops. It made seeds and and crops more resistant to particular chemicals. So they genetically modified what God had created as beautiful and perfect and made it so it could, they could spray a bunch of chemicals on to protect it from bugs, but also to, to um, produce crops faster. I'll explain that a little more when it comes to the gluten thing later on. So another uh, affectionate definition for GMO is God move over. <laughs> I don't want... God, move it over. I want the, if you want to say innate intelligence, God, whatever word you want to use, I want what was created in my body, the beautiful mechanism that God gave in this human being as well as all the other organisms and plant life and animal life. I want it left intact because there's a beauty in it and a complexity in it that is not, that is not meant to be mucked with. But in order to spray crops, they have GMO'd. But and that also there's there's plenty of speculation on what that does to our gene pool when we eat genetically modified organisms. So I, that's all speculation. I ha I've heard a little bit of research, but I would warn you that it is entirely possible because I've seen it, how it affects insects, and I believe even mice. It's specu it's 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 highly probable that it affects us as humans as well in our DNA pool, and I that that's something very serious to me. Organic basically means not GMO. Organic has not been sprayed. There's a high standard for organic farms and organic crops that there's, there's only a few chemicals they're allowed to spray on that are te technically non-toxic. Um, so when you eat organic, when you choose organic, you are getting less sprays, less chemicals that your body has to deal with. You know, ke um, medications chemicals, hairspray is chemicals. Um, all kinds of things we put in our body are chemicals, and some of those are almost unavoidable depending, you know, what we're, we run into in life. But I, but you and I can choose what food to put in our body. And to add more chemicals to a system that's already being overloaded, there is, I'll just, I'm just going to throw this in, I know this is not the topic tonight, but in the umbilical cord blood, they've, they've tested, you know, newborn babies' blood. Um, I'm trying to remember the number. It was a high number, like a hundred different chemicals was in the umbilical blood. That baby was being born with, with that many chemicals in their body already. It's serious. I don't want to add any more to my body because I have enough. And, when, and if you saw my bucket list there of, cro of chronic issues I had by the time I came to the practice, I certainly didn't need any extras. Um, Gluten-free. Minus gluten is what that means. Gluten is the largest gluten grain that we think of, of course, is wheat. But there's rye, there's barley, there's spelt. Um, and I think there's another one I'm not thinking off the top of my head right now. But those are the big ones. Um, so it means without gluten. Gluten, and just I'm going to make this short here. You know, God made grains with gluten in it. But today, the way they're raising the gluten, the crops, like the wheat, they kill them off early with Roundup. 
so that they can get another crop in more quickly and, and, and is for money making. That gluten content is far higher today than what it was originally created with. So we're getting so much more gluten into our bodies when we eat these grains as gluten is hard on even the most healthy intestine gluten is not an easy thing to absorb or to deal with for the intestinal tract and none of us have healthy intestinal tracts these days i have yet to see a patient come here when dr legree tests them i have yet to see a patient that has a perfect gut wall on the stool test um, our, our our intestinal tracts are stressed and when you add gluten to it it further stresses it which means it affects every organ in your body when that when that intestine is not working properly. Okay, now I'm gonna get into the fun stuff. Okay, fruits and vegetables. Okay, based on what I was saying about organic, organic is not sprayed. Um, I don't know how many of you have been raised on farms or have done have had friends that have done a lot of farming. When you truck patch, that means raising large amounts of, of fruits for you know pat for uh, on you know selling on the on a farmer's market or you know selling to a supermarket. A lot of sprays are used to increase the, the the production time, but also to keep the bugs from marring the appearance of the fruit and the vegetables. So. That's all for the purpose of making things marketable. I totally get it, but it's really, really harmful for us. So your only way of escaping that is to eat non-organic. And I know I used to think back when I was so sick, um, when I looked 42 pounds fluffier, I thought that you know if I peeled the skin off my apple, I would be getting rid of the sprays. Not so. Your skin and an apple, apple skin and any other fruit and vegetable, except for avocados and a couple of those, your skin is like a, a little sieve. It's a permeable surface. And what's put on the outside goes right into the bloodstream. And so the same thing happens with an apple. It's an absorbent peel. It takes that spray right into the core of it. So you are getting sprays in your fruits. And the only way to avoid herbicides, insecticides, and pesticides that are put on the, the food is to go organic when it comes to fruits and vegetables. That's the one part of the food I would say absolutely you must go organic because it's the hugest amount of uh, food that we take in that that has so many sprays on you really really that must be I would say that'd be the first switch to do the first thing to change in your in your home now, I'm going to be giving you a lot of things tonight and I encourage you to take it one step at a time you know make the switch this week to only organic fruits and vegetables next week add another thing next week I just add make this in steps for yourself um, and I would also welcome you to take snapshots if you want to take pictures of these slides um, I will be sending out a replay also but um take notes whatever way works for you because it's been a good bit of information here okay one one comes to fruits and vegetables back at before 1917 citric acid which is a preservative we think of it as a preservative it's in most i mean seriously about 34 percent i mean uh, 75 percent of the things you buy out there look and look at your ingredients on the on packages citric acid is in so much stuff it was made from lemons, lemons and limes back in the day before 1917. But in 1917, some smart person decided to make it, they found a creative way of not wasting the lemons and limes. We'll make it out of black mold instead from all the rotten stuff that grew the black mold. And so since that, since 1917, citric acid has been, is made from black mold, meaning you are ingesting a highly toxic chemical uh, natural chemical. You are, mold is one of the greatest neurotoxins that destroys brains, leads to Alzheimer's, dementia, and will stop your healing on pretty much every day. I've, I've watched neuropathy patients progressing beautifully and then all of a sudden it stops and we do a test and find out there's a boatload of mold inside of them. I've watched other people beautifully changing their lives, getting their energy back, their brains come back and all of a sudden they plateau and then start going backwards and it's because there's mold in there. Mold is your enemy. So as hard as it is for shopping, make sure you do not use anything with citric acid. That needs to be another change that we all make in our, in our, um, in our shopping menus. All right, so meats. You men are gonna love this one because I know you love meats. We women too, but 
Um, let's just start from left to right. Let's go for the, the organ um, chicken, poultry. That is one of the, oh my word, I have worked on poultry farms back when I was a Mennonite girl. That is the nastiest, dirtiest, smelliest, it's worse than pigs. Um, and the way they're raised is horrific. Crowded barns or pens, a lot of times it's little wire cages crammed in there. The, the ones that are raised for meat, the, the egg ones are the ones that are crammed in there. They live basically in a little straight jacket and have to lay eggs until they die. But the, um, the, the, veg, I mean, the ones that are raised for meat, oh, hang on. I thought I turned my little, um, hang on here. Um, so, Doc, if you want to, okay, I'll show you the Um, so, sorry about that. Here we get this thing silenced so it doesn't go off again. Poultry is raised extremely fast. They give them a ton of steroids and they, they, in, they, they raise them too fast. Like in about six weeks, you got a chicken from a little chick to ready to be harvested. And they, they get to a point where they, they, they fatten so fast, their joints can't take it. They fall over. Some of them die because they get trampled by the others. It's, it's nasty. It's gross. It's awful. And absolutely in, inhumane. The, the, um, the food they're fed is awful. It's, it's corn, for one thing. If, it's, if you, when it comes to the, the poultry and the beef, if you don't get organic, what you're getting is you're getting grass-fed creatures. Now, I'm sorry, corn-fed creatures. The corn in America, all of it, is the seed is owned by Monsanto and it's been sprayed with a lot of either Roundup, ammonia. I lived on a corn farm. Um, and the corn that they feed to the cows and the chickens is largely sprayed with ammonia. Huge amounts of it that actually kills the soil. There's like nothing living in the soil anymore. No worms, no nothing. That's what's being fed to these creatures that we are eating. So we are ingesting all chickens through those beef. So it is, it's, um, Dr. Legree, can you call um, Paul Sheila? I think he's having some trouble with his thing. Okay. Um, here, you can answer it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Someone's having trouble getting into the, into the room here, I think. Um, so yeah, want to watch that. Watch for the organic, free-range chicken. So you can get a chicken that's happy when it when it passes on, and a chicken that's healthy. And a very similar comes with the beef. Again, beef are raised. Cows are raised in small little pens. They're raised um, with very little love. They're fed corn. They're they're just and they're raised extremely fast. Again, with steroids. So they can, you know, harvest the veal, harvest the just the beef and the boatloads. Of and I know, I know, organic costs a little more. We're gonna talk about that a little bit here, just after a second, in a second. But it is far worth it when you think about the humane way the animals are raised, and the quality of nutrients that you're getting or not getting, and the amount of destructive um, chemicals that are coming through if you eat the the non non organic. The cow for the for the beef, I really want to encourage you to, if you can't get organic, definitely do at least grass fed. I personally experienced the difference between this when I when I came in. I thought I was allergic to beef because I seemed to react every time I eat it. I just did not feel good. When I switched to grass fed beef, I was fine. And here come to find out I wasn't even allergic to corn, which you know the beef were eaten. It must have been the sprays that were on the corn that was coming through in huge amounts in the non-grass fed beef. When I switched to grass fed, which means they've been out there eating off the pasture, not off the land like needed to. And and it's a very happy existence for the cows. Um, that kind of meat my body was okay with. And so there's a huge difference for what your body takes in and, and how it responds to it. You may or may not feel those responses. Sometimes when our bodies are so toxic and so um, broken down our intestinal walls, our body can't even communicate to us and tell us how bad it feels. So we may not feel these symptoms. Other people may feel the symptoms, but it doesn't matter. These foods are hurting us nonetheless, whether we feel it or not. When it comes to fish, 
or seafood, you definitely want to stick with wild caught. The reason is the farmed fish or seafood is if you were to look in the pools of water they use for those, it is awful. The water is so contaminated with feces from the previous fish and from themselves even. Fellow fishes, feces, especially when it comes to shrimp, that is the case. It's very, 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 very contaminated. So though we enjoy those foods, we absolutely must have wild caught in order to have a healthy, healthy um, selection and not to be putting more chemicals in our body and more toxins in our body. That your enemy, if you want to lead a healthy life, a full life, a productive life, and an enjoyable life, your enemy is toxins. So what this whole webinar is about cutting down the toxins, cutting down the inflammation that comes through with toxic food. Does that make sense? We're trying, I'm trying to give you tips on how to cut out the toxic food. All right. I know, like I said, I know organic is more expensive. I know you can get beef ground burger for $3.99. If you pay for organic, it's $5.99. I know that, but I'll tell you what, being sick is far more expensive. The cost, the end cost of being sick down the road and even in by middle age is horrific. I have had, we've had so many patients coming here that they actually wanna do rebuilds and they're bankrupt. It's, it's, it's awful. Being sick is no way to go. And if you can invest a few extra dollars a week into your, into your budget to eat healthier, you're saving yourself on the long end. You're investing in your health. You're investing in your life so that you don't have a, a you are a ticking time bomb like Doc talked about. Food is something that you take in every single day, so it's the easiest and the biggest thing for you to reverse. Does that make sense? So I don't say it's expensive. I actually say being sick is very costly. Cost of quality of life and cost of actual money. All right, so we're gonna go to, to grains now. And I know there's a, a, lot of, a lot of talk about gluten-free, and I'm gonna explain a little, I explained a little bit already about today have a higher gluten content and that is extremely harmful and difficult for the body to digest. A lot of people actually have gluten allergies. Some do not. Some simply just react to it because it's so difficult for the body to digest. So the easiest, the best way is to go gluten free. Now, if you're like me six years ago, I would have agreed with you and you said, ah, gluten free food just doesn't have much flavor. It's yuck. Well, some of it is pretty bland. I'll, I'll agree with you. There's a lot of different gluten-free out there. You have to just try it. Try out one one bread after another, one pasta after another, till you find the one that suits you. But here's the deal: your taste buds are organs. Every organ in your body right now, unless you've done a rebuild, every organ in your body is it has toxins in it. It's toxic. When something's toxic, it can't function fully. Detoxify your body, not necessarily through detoxes, but by rebuilding it and getting, getting healthier and, and reducing the infections. And oh, there's so many different ways, getting the mold out of your body. As you do that, those taste buds, those little organs also detoxify and they start working better. I can taste so much flavor now in things that I used to think were yuck. I really can. And I understand why some of my patients say, oh, but this just doesn't even taste good. Well, I get it. Give yourself time. Give your taste buds time. Give yourself the window of time. Give yourself the healthy foods so your body can heal, and then you will have the flavor. But in the meantime, you've got me to coach you because if you come on as a patient, I will show you how to make that food yummy. Okay? All right. Sweeteners. Oh, my. We of all cultures in the world love our Alcoholics here in America, uh, pretty much live on sugar, sugar or alcohol. And just for you men, <laughs> it's funny, I laugh at it because I just think, I understand, it's just one of those pleasures, one of those things you go to, and it's just like, I totally get it. But the reality is, for you and for us females, sugar actually raises your estrogen, it feeds at your estrogens, which for you men, it dumbs down your testosterone, meaning it makes you have less energy in the long run down the road. It makes you have less sex drive, less drive, period, in life. 
it dumps your testosterone down, which actually reduces your immune system. Hormonal balance is tied intricately with immune system function. And so when we are eating, male or female, eating a boatload of, of sugars, especially the, this list right here, particularly that one and just plain old sugar. I didn't, I didn't even put cane sugar on here. Cane sugar. Cane sugar. White, raw, I don't care. Organic, I don't care. Sugar itself is your enemy. In this case, I don't even care if it's organic. It's still your, it's still your enemy. Because what it does is it feeds infections. Every infection resident in your body will be fed by sugar or by any of these. Um, it will, I lost my train of thought. It will feed infections. It'll feed cancer cells. We all have cancer cells in our body. They're just sitting there under control if our immune system is strong enough. But if you get, if you start feeding your body a ton of sugar, and that's giving those little cancer cells a treat every day. And after a bit, they get a little rowdy and they start growing. You don't want that. It also leads to brain fog, particularly this high fructose corn syrup, which is in almost every packaged food out there. You guys, that stuff is literally poison. It will destroy your brains and your body and your health like nothing else. These ones right here are synthetic sweeteners that will also destroy your brains. They're not good for you. Um, that's why I say stay away from those. Not so much because they, they, they won't necessarily raise your blood sugar, but they, are destroy, they will destroy your brain. The ones that will not, and there's like four, that will not feed, destroy your brain, for one thing. They will not feed infections. In fact, one of them fights infections. And they will not raise your blood sugar. So this is, this is the sweeteners for diabetics, okay? Erythritol, but only use organic, because erythritol is also made by corn, and you don't want the, the, the chemicals coming through the corn. So make sure you get organic erythritol. That's pretty much the same sweetness as sugar. Monk fruit, uh, not quite as sweet as, as sugar. You have to use a little bit extra. But monk fruit sweet, sweetener is another option. Stevia is extremely much sweeter than, than um, sugar. You have to Google it to find the ratios. Um, it's basically one teaspoon to a cup. But um, that one actually kills infection. And by the way, there's a, a pop line, soda pop, uh, carbonated drink, whatever you call it, that uses stevia. It's called Zevia. And so that you're helping your, you're helping your intestinal tract while you're feeding your taste buds. <laughs> Xylitol is a detox friend. It actually helps you detox out toxins, the things that you're moving out of your body. It grabs them and helps usher them out. It's kind of a little binder. Um, but it is not as sweet as sugar, so you have to use more of it. So these are, I want you to take a, take a shot of that and make sure you write those down. Those are your safe sweeteners. You can find candy with those. There's enough of us out there in this world asking for these kind of foods that they're starting, the, the marketplace is starting to increase it. 10, 15 years ago, you hardly found this stuff. Thank God we actually have more selection now. But you can find candy, you can find chocolate, you can find pastries and stuff with that. All right. Dairy. Back to the poor little cows, yeah. If you're getting regular cow's milk, just regular old cow's milk, I don't care if it's whole milk, skim milk, whatever, you're getting a cow that's raised on pasture some, but it's raised to, to production, raised to, to being bred and um, milked in about a year's time which a normal healthy cow takes about a year and a half to two years. They rush that poor critter. They pump it with steroids. It gets sick very easily, and they have to hit it with tons of antibiotics. All of that stuff is coming through your milk that you drink and going into your body and destroying your gut wall. Grass-fed, on the other hand, is raised like the grass-fed beef. Out on the pasture, living naturally, being milked on a 24-hour cycle, feels healthy, loves life, and is being raised maturely to maturity healthy. And you get a lot more vitamins in the process, a lot more omega and minerals and vitamins through that kind of cow. We can't see any of that. Part. And I know I, have, I need to get do something here with my lighting. I'm not sure how to do it. Okay, let me, let me read this here to you. Yeah, just read it. The, the regular cow's milk is raised in confined spaces. It's given hormones, and they're raised fast to, the, to maturity so they can produce milk. You have four times the amount of fat per three-ounce serving in regular milk than you do in grass-fed. Regular milk um, may contain antibiotic and steroid residues. They're, the regular cows are fed GMO feed and grains, particularly corn, 
rarely do they get grass. And they're, they're, the feed that they get is treated with Roundup weed killer and syn synthetic pesticides. So all of that comes through your milk and into your body. And when the milk, to make it even worse, when the milk's homogenized, it breaks down the molecules of the milk and it passes through that gut wall into your bloodstream far faster and the body can't stop the, the, the toxins as easy. It goes right into the bloodstream. So that is even worse. Um, the grass-fed, those deer happy cows are allowed to roam freely in the pasture and they're not given hormones they're allowed to mature naturally there's two to four times more omega-3 in a grass-fed um, serving of milk and there's more minerals and there's more vitamins just natural because of the, their diet they are not given any antibiotics they're not allowed to be um, in order to be organic or certified organic they're fed 100% organic feed and grass. That means no GMO food, no GMO corn goes into these critters. And there's no Roundup or synthetic pesticides used in the feed. It's actually banned for organic farmers. So you are protected when you're eating grass-fed milk. All right, this is a big one that we talk about a lot practice here because it's a it's a shocker for many people we've been you know for years we've heard oh cut the fat down well my family too mom was a very very lean cooker she she did not have used much fat when she did use fat she used what she thought was good oil it was canola oil well i'm going to tell you about that in a second um but we just didn't use much fat we didn't understand the purpose of fat in the body fat is your brain's favorite fuel more often than not today we feed our brain sugar that's so we get power to our brain our brain actually our body was created to actually burn fat and if you switch today if you instead of grabbing a cookie you grab um let's see a hunk of cheese even your body may rebel for a couple days till it gets used to the switch over till it learns to start converting uh the the fat again but it knew back in the day that it was meant to have to have fat and that's what it burns more easily with that with less um Oh, this is going to show more. I come by creosote in the chimney, uh, less less uh, rust in the in the tailpipe. I mean, you you're going to have less residue left from burning fat than you will a sugar. Far better for the fuel for the body. And fat or cholesterol is actually your body's cement. Cement. You know, we all have heard, and it's true. Plaque is, you, plaque is packed onto the arteries, and, and we see that as a problem, which it is, because it blocks the arteries. But the real reason the plaque is there is because your arteries were perforated by inflammation. Huh, it might have been from the food you ate. might have been from toxins you had breathed. It could have been from whatever. But those perforations, those cracks in the arterial walls, the body took its natural cement, which is cholesterol, that it had harvested from your food, and from your body and it packed it in there to seal that wound. So the real problem the plaque, the plaque is the cholesterol that your body's using in a very wise and healthy way. The problem is why is there holes in your artery? Let's get rid of the inflammation causing the holes and the plaque will go away. We've actually done that with patients here. We've watched it happen where you reduce their inflammation, you get their body and their arteries healthy, you start feeding them the things their body needs and that cholesterol placking in the arteries goes down. The body won't do that. It won't put plaque there unless it needs it. So the real problem is not the plaque. That's your body's way of fixing the problem. The real problem is the holes in the artery, the, the, the little slits, the little pieces of, that are letting, letting um, that are jeopardizing your, your life, literally. So let's heal our bodies. Let's not attack the cholesterol. Fat, your body needs fat to repair. Fat is also, needed for hormones male and female actually but females particularly if you have a woman that's too skinny too thin no fat in her body she she can't she she will have no cycle fat is essential for body functions and fats covers is part of the covering of your nerve fibers so if you don't have that covering of nerve fiber what happens if you have a raw wire laying in the room and you touch it oh it's gonna sizzle yeah it's gonna sizzle bad but you need that fat, that cholesterol, to cover those nerve fibers to protect you and to keep those nerves functioning well. Okay, this is where the whole canola oil thing, and we, we grew up, for a while we used vegetable oil, 
all the time for frying our foods, frying all our wild fish that we caught that tasted so amazing on walleye and northern pike. Oh, yum. And then mom found out that canola oil was was healthier, she was told. She, we found that out somewhere. We read it on the line or something. And we thought, well, it's a little more expensive, but we're going to make the switch. I remember mom saying that, you know, she's going to do that as much as she can to protect the family. We switched to canola. Little did we know that they both are industrial seed oils. They're both, they're both industrial byproducts. Neither one is healthy. Um, both of them are highly inflammatory. Somehow, <laughs> They figured a way to make another uh, another profit by harvesting these these byproducts and putting them in a bottle for us and saying, "Hey, here's some healthy oil for you. Don't eat the coconut oil. That stuff's bad for you." Well, it actually isn't. Again, unless you have an allergy to coconut or something like that, your body knows how to keep as much cholesterol as it needs and to discard what it doesn't need. Again, cholesterol is your body's friend for repairing and rebuilding hormones and tissue and to give you energy. When I, I'll just tell you for example, when I started, and, and, and fat will not, eating fat will not put weight on you if your body is healthy. When I came here as a patient, like with so sick, like I described earlier, I started eating fat on my food with good oils, with like the seed or the nut oils, excuse me, you know, like hazelnut oil or, or and now you, I love the avocado oil now, you know, whatever oil, um, I started using coconut oil, um, I used ghee, just different things. I was using oil or fat of some sort in basically every meal I, I ate, and I was using lots of it. Well, what did I do? I lost 42 pounds, and I got a ton of energy, and the brain fog went away. What's that tell you about that fat? Not my enemy, it's my friend. <laughs> it actually reduced the quantity of food I ate because my body soon realized that it got it was getting fat and so it could burn that at a higher higher fuel rate than the carbs i used to be eating it's it, it's incredible the body is so intelligent so here's a good list um nuts and oil from the nuts and seeds like you know pumpkin seeds and that kind of thing as well from the avocados sardines salmon any fish particularly but those are two main ones that have a good good natural omega-3s in them Organic olives and olive oil. And I will say one thing, um, those that are trying to be healthy today, and I am so glad there's a trend of people trying to eat healthily, but they're using organic, using oil for every, uh, olive oil for everything. They're frying with it, they're baking with it. Olive oil is meant for low temperatures, like for salads, or to pour on top of your hot spaghetti after you get it out of the pan and put it on your plate. It's not formulated to handle high heat. In fact, it will break down at high heat and it becomes toxic to you. So please stop using oil, olive oil for heated foods. Make sure you use it only for cold or semi-cold foods. Choose instead, you know, some nut oil or avocado oil to fry your foods in or to use in your baking. Um, do not use olive oil. Cacao butter, that's the healthy chocolate. Ladies, chocolate's actually good for you, not the sugar. And I have recipes for how to make it without sugar. But you get that good old dark chocolate, mm -hmm, that's really good for your hormones, and it's good for your brain. And I don't care what anybody says, we get to enjoy it. <laughs> if we like, especially certain times of the month, just have at it, eat that chocolate. <laughs> Ghee is basically butter that has had the protein molecule removed for those that are allergic to actual dairy products. So grass-fed butter is super great. Kerrygold is a brand and it comes from um, Ireland. It's not labeled grass-fed or organic, but I've done the research and others have as well. It is a safe and wonderful brand to use. It is grass-fed cows, almost 100% grass-fed, and, and they're raised so humanely compared to here. It's a really, really, really good kind of, of um, I want to use dairy. All right, so in summary, the things to avoid, pesticides, chemicals, for sure, in fruits and vegetables, and avoid the antibiotics and the steroids in meats, so get the organic meat. Absolutely don't touch high fructose corn syrup, and cut down that sugar, and don't use the artificial sweeteners, and change your oil, get rid of that bad oil, and get some good oil in the house. Okay, for eating clean, again, this is all in summary buy only organic produce, you know, fruits and vegetables, 
only gluten-free breads, pastas, etc., and eat lots of good fats. Reduce your sweeteners and your carbs. I didn't talk about carbs much, but carbs do convert to sugar instantly in the bloodstream. So for those of you, I think there's a someone asked a diabetic question on the, the intake form. Um, carbs will convert instantly to or quickly into sugar and for those that are trying to lose weight for any reason or to improve their hormones you want to or to de detox you don't want to feed those infections with more sugars so cutting down carbs cutting down on sweeteners even like fruit just reducing those kind of things will help you out but then the one little key that i didn't talk about yet is changing it up you know again back in the day back in the caveman days if you will they ate according to the season they ate according to what was growing there, whether it was berries, whether it was oranges, whether it was crops in the garden. You know, in the wintertime, they ate the dried foods, the salted foods, the, the dehydrated things, the, the preserved foods. Now today, because of our wonderful um, culture that we're in, we have access to everything all the time. That's wonderful in my way of thinking, except it's not wonderful for my body. Your body is made to need things to change. It needs to be startled now and then. Stressed, if you will, a little bit. Whether that's fasting for a day or a meal, just to startle it for a bit. It resets the body's ability to filter, to process, and to engage with life. Um, and it's very important to change up your diet, too. You know, eat the fruits that are in season. I know we can get them all here, but do a little research. Find out, you know, when oranges are the best and eat them only then, you know. And then just not eat much the rest of the year you know eat the strawberries in june or may you know when they're fresh and 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 in season eat the apples in in july august september you know eat the peaches you know when they come in let your body see the seasonal foods it's really 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 good for it so that's a little t a little tip and yeah throw some fasting in there you'll be surprised i actually have had massive health changes with just fasting it's not a cure-all but it definitely gives your body a reset so it can fight harder and, and, and work better for you. Okay, so the way I'm describing eating, is this going to fix all your problems? Is this going to be a one-size-fits-all like a lot of the fad diets out there saying, you know, paleo, keto? They all have their, or I think it was the Atkins diet back in the, back, you know, a couple years ago. All these different diets, I haven't kept up on it. They all have their point and they all have really good points, but Again, you do one thing for too long, it becomes harmful to you. What I'm sharing tonight is not a diet. This is a way of living. This is a lifestyle of reducing the inflammation in your body and increasing your body's ability to be able to heal itself, setting a good foundation on which you can build, you know, doing, doing other things like detoxing, like fighting infections, like, well, just all kinds of things. It's your foundation for health. It's not a diet. And no, it will not remove all your health problems. Oh, you may find some real improvement. You may feel some definite improvement. Expect that. But it won't take the H. pylori out of your body. It won't remove the infections. It won't make all the brain fog go away and, and reverse your Alzheimer's. Um, that is, those are deeper dives you're going to have to do. But it will give you a foundation to do that well. Food allergies. Um, you know, what if I told you, like I told you to eat organic carrots, didn't I? And I told you to eat coconut oil. Um, what happens if you're allergic to coconut? What happens if that organic carrot is, uh, is something your body says, no, I don't want? Can you figure out food allergies yourself? Well, let me just tell you, this is one thing, again, that I coach a lot here. We do food allergy testing in the, in the practice here. Dr. Legree has been amazing at sourcing out the best food allergy tests for our patient. There's a, there's a ton of food allergy testing options out there. And we, we, because he keeps getting the best one. They keep improving the testing and he keeps finding, finding the one that's, that's the best. So you, you need to get your food allergies testing because it doesn't matter if, if that food is organic or not. It will react and cause inflammation in your bloodstream if your body has marked it as something it does not want to see. And the only way to know that is by blood. And the way I can say that so authoritatively is there are like 10 different 
um, allergies or sensitivities, food sensitivities. They're called you know, IgG, IgH, IgE, Ig. There's all a bunch. There's 10 of them. A lot of them you cannot feel for up to 17 hours if you ever even feel it then. But it's still causing inflammation in your body. It's still slowly decreasing your heart function. It's still slowly decreasing your hormone balance. It's still causing inflammation that's wasting your body's energy and causing, causing dysfunction everywhere. So can you, can you do an elimination diet to find all your food allergies? No. The only way is testing. You can find the worst ones. If you feel a reaction when you eat the food, well, that's a bad allergy. You, you, you found one that your body really doesn't like. But it's not telling you all the ones that it doesn't like that it's just keeping kind of quiet so it doesn't want to bother you too much, you know? So we need to test you to know exactly what is causing inflammation, what's ruining your health silently inside. Um, for weight loss, yeah, well, should I go vegan? Should I eat less food? Should I cut out the fat? We talked about that a little bit earlier. Again, the key is to find out what's causing that weight on your body. Um, I know people always think, oh, food's a culprit. Well, not really. When it comes to, to weight, what I've seen over and over and over and over through the years with the patients that Doc and I have worked with here, it's really not even the food. Well, the food allergies for sure, but it's more often things like hormones, infections, um, mold even, that is keeping the weight on the body. The body will keep weight there, fat and fluid, to protect itself from the toxins. It holds the toxins in that fat and fluid. It stores it there. And it's not going to let it go. Or if you do make it, if you force it to let go of fat, it'll put it right back on again because it wants to protect you. And it won't let that go permanently until you are safe, until you've gotten rid of the thing causing it. And that's why I got rid of those 42 pounds in five months' time without even trying because I was dealing with the things that were causing the weight and that's, the, and that's the only reason it stayed off, because I dealt with those things that was causing the weight. So testing, testing, testing is definitely the key. And I'm going to give you an offer to, to have a consult with Dr. Legree a little bit later on tell you about so you can figure out what testing is going to be best for you. Um, first, I wanted to tell you, though, about the next one. Of health, Dr. Legree mentioned, you know, we are, we are the temple of God. Um, in the, in the, with the Christian way of, of believing. We are the temple of God. We are the structure holding up this temple, or there's five pillars. And we're going to be sharing at least four of them with you here in this series. Um, the next one is sleep. If you do not sleep well, you cannot heal. And your health will go down, and a bomb will go off eventually in your body. So next seminar talk by, taught by our expert holistic natural health doctor, Dr. Jeff Legree, will be next Tuesday at the same time, on the same venue, with the same link. So share with your friends, tell them about it. In the meantime, we're going to jump right back on the same link next week, and Doc's going to be talking about sleep. So that hopefully you can get a little closer to that sweet little child there on the bottom and not that picture at the top there where you, the darkness is your enemy. <laughs> um, Those that are here, um, I hope this has piqued your interest to really get to the bottom of your health. And I know by virtue of even being here, you care about your health and you really do want a better quality of life or you want to actually pro or just simply protect the quality of life you have. Um, if you are wanting to go deeper and really want to find out what is going on inside that I don't know about, what is going on that someday could turn into a heart attack or cancer, what, like I was had, had going on you know, with my breast lump all of a sudden appearing and freaking me out. Would you like to know that ahead of time? You can see a lot of that stuff on tests before it actually happens, and you can reverse it so it never happens. I tell you those kind of stories, too, from people here. But um, you'll get a new patient evaluation, a detailed case history, a report of findings, and a personalized care plan. Oftentimes, that's in two visits. Sometimes it's in one, but usually in two visits. And the value of that is $300. And man... Any of you that have gone, he spends far more time with you than a conventional doctor tends to just because he cares and he can. Um, and he really wants you to find the root answer. So he, he wants to hear your story because you have the keys to your health, to your kingdom. You just need someone to help you, to guide you, and to, to fill in the pieces that, that are missing yet. 
Um, for those that have attended this webinar, and if you share it with your friends, and they listen to it, they're like, man, you know, I really want to, I really want to do something for myself. I really want to change my future. I don't want to be another statistic in this world. Then the, that price will only be $99. We'll cover that whole evaluation process. And then Dr. Ligri will, will have a plan put together for you specifically and for your body and your health situation. All right, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for taking your health seriously. And thank you so much for taking... that first step and make yourself do that i want to i want to see you guys succeed all right yay way to go you guys have a good night love yous god bless <laughs> thanks <laughs> okay all right you did it okay i gotta figure out how to end this thing <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs>